The Horsehead Nebula is a classic in astrophotography. Um, it looks like a simple target, again, but it's also a massive challenge if you go to reality. Um, because there is the moonlight and there is the bright star Anitag. So, here you're gonna see what we did. <laughs> Assembling the telescope is always the most time-consuming part and no mistakes can be allowed to creep in. The SIA mini computer is a big help in this regard. Our target is right here in the constellation Orion. We are aiming at the bright star Einitag. And um, what I ask myself as a beginner is, well, I am an absolute beginner in that, so I ask myself, what is that red curtain behind it? It's the um, hydrogen nebula, while the thing in front of it is a silhouette, which looks like a horse. And, well, it's dark nebula, so it doesn't glow. We're essentially trying to catch that silhouette in front of that glowing nebula behind it. When I'm setting up the telescope, I need to pull I align the telescope to the north first. And here we use a semi-automatic process with the ASI Air mini computer. It works just great. We use the 6-inch Newtonian telescope with an extremely fast f3.45 and a 520mm focal length. On paper, the specs were perfect. In reality, well, look at this. We were shooting near a full moon. Usually, that is a problem for deep sky imaging. But the biggest problem was our location. We didn't have a lot of time because a massive tree and the house were blocking the view. We basically had a tiny stressful window to shoot before the nebula disappeared behind the tree. And if that wasn't enough, the guiding on the first night was highly erratic. There was no wind and the scope was well balanced. It was really a mess. Any ideas? Please comment below. It would really help us a lot because we encountered this problem many times. We couldn't use a lot of the frames from that session because the stars were just trading all over the place. Because of the lost data and the obstructions, this project is split over two nights. On that first night, Arne used a dual band filter to try and cut through the moonlight. For the second night, he switched to a CLS filter. To be clear, if we were in a truly dark location without this moonlight, we wouldn't use filters at all to get the most natural broadband color. But here we had no choice. When we talk about Alnitag, um, we can say that that star is incredibly bright. With fast optics and filters, it loves to create massive halos and reflections that almost ruined our shot. Also look down here at NGC 2023, that is Reflection Nebula. The stronger filters block broadband light, so we struggle to capture that bluish reflection detail while boosting the red emissions. Here you can see the ASI Air plate solving in action. For the second night we need the exact same camera position for combining images of both nights. This is a stack picture with a CLS filter. But in the end, we had to combine the usable subs from both nights, stacking the dual band data together with the CLS data to get enough signal. Despite the moon, the bad guiding and the house blocking our view, we made it work. And this is the final result. You can clearly see the contrast here. The red H alpha wall of IC434 and the dark dust cloud Barna 33 the horse head itself standing out as perfect silhouette. It's definitely not the cleanest image ever taken, but considering the conditions, we are really happy. Especially how the dark clouds stand out against the background. Have you ever tried shooting a deep sky during a full moon? Let us know in the comments how it went. If you liked the video, drop a like and subscribe. See you next time and clear skies. Clear skies.